22. Head full of bees. That afternoon, I run through a cold, heavy drizzle to Linda's car. Once I'm in, I lift my hat a little and use a Kleenex to round up some of the hair that falls out. I can feel Linda watching me. You okay, Ross? It looks like you're starting to lose some hair there. I stop and glare at her. Gee, do you really think so, Linda? I know it's jerky, but it feels really good to say it. Like pushing on a loose tooth with my tongue. To her credit, Linda doesn't give up. Hey, I get it. I'd be upset too. She gives me a sad smile. Your hair is part of you. But just remember it's temporary. You'll be back to normal again really soon. There's that word again. Normal. Unfortunately, she caps it off with a big, loud, gurgly sip from her nearly empty Bucky's tea. I snap. That's great. Thank you. I'll remember that, Linda, as me and my temporary abnormalness wallow around tonight on our hairy freaking sheets. It's coming out, and I'm not really in control now. Maybe, Linda, just maybe, we can ride along in silence now so I can contemplate my impending return to normalcy in a few short months. I'm bolt upright in my seat, and it takes all I have not to rear back and kick the dashboard. Linda looks over at me with her eyebrows up and holds out a hand in surrender. Okay. Whoa. I'm sorry, Ross. We're all learning as we go here, but clearly I hit a nerve. I know you're upset about Abby moving, too. It's a lot to take. I'm... I'm really sorry, honey. I pull my backpack into my lap and glare out the rain-streaked window. Linda, can you not call me honey? Four minutes later, I stalk into the lobby of the radiation center and brush the water out of my hair. I feel like my head is full of bees. Hey, hey. Dime slot. How are we today? Jerry's in his usual spot, smiling and lifting his coffee at me. I don't know how to react. I feel like a raw nerve. I'm hardly in the mood to socialize. I stand still and take a few deep breaths. When I feel like I can function again, I walk over to the couches. Hi, Jerry. He looks me up and down. You look like Dookie, son. He chuckles, which leads to a few phlegmy coughs. I sit a couple of couches away. Yeah, I'm just... Jerry nods. That's cool. I get it. He picks up his magazine. I flop back against the couch and close my eyes. There's no music playing today. The only sounds are the rain and the occasional page turn from Jerry. He seems like he's into his article. I glance over at the reception desk, but nobody's manning it this afternoon. I look back as Jerry licks a big finger and turns another page. Seemed like a pretty good head of steam you had coming in here. He doesn't look up. I feel my shoulders loosen. Sorry. Without moving his head, he looks over at me. You don't need to apologize to me. I take off my hat and run a hand through my hair and see a small clump fall to the carpet. I should pick it up, but I don't. It just... it's just a lot. Oh, sure. Jerry sets down his magazine and shifts in his seat. I had one doozy of a snit last week. Over a cold bowl of broccoli cheddar soup, of all things. But Marilyn still isn't real happy with me. I nod. My hair, it's falling out. I don't know. I mean, I have the hat. It hides it. So it shouldn't even matter. Jerry nods. Oh, it matters. It matters plenty. That's a tough thing. He runs a big hand over his bald head. Lost mine a long time ago. But that was different. I'm really tired. Like, my bones feel tired. What day you on, Ross? I have 16 treatments left. I look sideways at him. But who's counting? 
He gives a one-puff laugh, nods for a while. This. He waves a hand around at the waiting room. All of it. It's a big thing, Ross. Especially at your age. Jerry grunts a bit as he gets up and heads to the coffee station for a refill. You're supposed to be out playing ball and chasing the young ladies. Now I laugh. I'm not much of a lady chaser. At least I'm not very good at it. But you get what I mean. He pours half a cup and comes over to the chair closest to me. This isn't normal, what you're doing. What we're doing. It's weird. I let my head drop back and talk to the ceiling. Jerry, can I tell you how sick I am of being different? I hate it. You have no idea what I give to be normal. Like a normal kid with a normal hatless head and a goopless eye and a normal life and friends who aren't moving away and and hair and... I taper off, realizing I'm whining. Why? I tip my head and look at him like he's lost his marbles. You're asking why I wish I didn't have cancer? Jerry scratches at some silver stubble on his cheek. No. No, I definitely understand that part. But you talk about normal a lot. What's so great about being normal? I stare back. Because it's... normal. I don't know. Normal is normal. Why is good good? Why is tasty tasty? Normal's just the thing you shoot for. Jerry scoots forward, rubs his palms together. See, that's where I think you're wrong. He pulls a handkerchief out of his back pocket and wipes his nose. Blows it. I don't think normal is a goal. At least not a worthy one. Oh, no. I feel a lecture coming on. I look at the electric doors for Frank. What if everyone was completely normal, Ross? Have you ever thought of that? It'd be really boring, if you ask me. I sniff and fidget. He goes on. But different? That's another matter. Different moves the needle. Different is where the good stuff happens. There's strength in different. I scratch at my forehead and lower my eyelids at him. So I should be glad my cancer makes me different? I'm missing your point. Nah. He sits back, waves it away with his big hand. And I'm not sure what my point is either. Look at me trying to be the magical old man who dispenses wisdom like he's some kind of... I don't know. He shifts around in his seat. My dad. He was a hard guy. Practical. He... So I was pretty good at trumpet. Thought I could be a pro. Chet Baker, Louis Armstrong, all that. But he... He looks uncomfortable talking about this, but goes on. But son, that's not what people do. Normal people. He drilled that into me. And I... I stopped playing. Sold appliances, because that's what... He stops, lost in thought. I was good. I mean, really good. But he... I think about that all the time. He tapers off. Shakes his head and laughs. Sorry about that. Went off on a tangent there, didn't I? Not sure what my trumpet dreams have to do with your situation, but... He smiles. This is what happens when you get old. I give him a weak smile. No, I think I get what you're saying. I mean, kind of. Maybe. He laughs. Never mind. Eat your vegetables and stay in school. Anything else is just me talking out of my neck. He picks up his magazine and crosses his legs, and I notice for the first time that he's wearing bright blue SpongeBob SquarePants socks. I grab a Coke, 
go over to the window and sip it while I stare out at the cold drizzle. I can't believe I yelled at Linda like that. Fat Pig Comics presents Fat Pig versus the Hairball. The pig symbol was up. Fat Pig sprang into action. A giant hairball was rolling toward the St. Sarah Pizzeria. The horror! Rumble. Oh, save it a mozzarella. Fat Pig came in fast. Fly, fly! Taking his detangler from his pig belt. Ha-ha! He saved the day! That pig is a hero! Booyah! You're my hero! Why a pig? 